I've been using this exact microphone on literally every session that I've done for over a year now, so I figured it's about time that I make a video about this mic, explaining why I love it so much, breaking down some of the really cool features that I think put it above competitors, and just showing you why this has basically replaced every other mic inside of my mic locker. So we're gonna dive in and take a really in-depth look at this mic with examples, of course, but before we do that, my name's Austin, you're watching Make Pop Music. If you like this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Helps us out a ton, we do these videos every single Friday. And if you wanna leave a comment down below, let us know what videos you want us to make on the channel, we're always taking your feedback. But let's talk about this mic. So the mic that we're gonna be talking about today is by a brand called Lawton Audio. You've probably seen me use them on the channel a ton, and if you've watched any of our videos in the past year, you've definitely heard me track vocals and acoustic guitar through this. This is specifically their microphone called the LT386, also known as the Eden. It's basically their flagship tube microphone. So if you're in the market for a really, really high quality tube mic, this is probably gonna have you covered. There are a couple features that this mic has that a lot of other tube mics on the market do not have. So we're gonna talk about all of those, but before we do, I do just wanna explain that this is definitely an investment mic. This is not like a super, super budget friendly mic. This is going to be a piece that if you work every day in audio, if you need a mic that is super versatile, if you're okay with investing, I think you get more for your money's worth with this mic, but with that said, it is definitely still an expensive piece of gear. Normally, it's ranging right around 38, 3900, uh, but sometimes there's sales. Obviously, prices change as the years go on. So depending on when you're watching this, you just wanna check out whatever retailers you shop at uh, and catch the current price. But we're talking right around 3800 to $4,000 which seems like a lot for a microphone, but once you get into that top range of tube mics where you're looking at things like your Neumanns, your Telefunkens, your Manleys, this is not an unheard of price, but this thing has a bunch of unheard of features that those other mics are not gonna have. And I wanna talk a little bit about those. So the first is going to be polar patterns. I know it seems obvious. You would think that any mic that is three grand, four grand, five grand would have polar patterns, but that's not always the case. The Loudon Audio Eden actually does. So we have a cardioid pattern that I use for vocals pretty much all the time. We also have an omni pattern that I really, really love for doing like acoustic guitars, background vocals, any kind of percussion in the room. And then there is a figure eight pattern that I love using for like mid side recording on guitars, or if I throw it on like a drum overhead and I wanna capture the sides, the figure eight pattern is really, really great on that. So you do get all of those with this mic. The next thing that I wanna talk about is a super unique feature, and it is that it has a couple filters, which I know you're thinking a lot of mics have like low pass filters or high pass filters, but this one is a little bit different because these filters aren't just EQs, right? So this has obviously the option to use it flat with no filter, but then you have a soft filter also referred to as the kick filter sometimes, or you have the hard filter, which is referred to as the vocal filter. So what's really cool about these is that they actually happen first in the chain. So as soon as audio comes in through the capsule, it's hitting those filters if you have them engaged, which is really shaping the tone before it goes through all of the circuitry, before it goes through the tube, and then before it comes out of the uh, you know, signal path at the bottom. So a lot of microphones, when they have those you know, high pass and low pass filters that you can engage, they're happening last in the chain. So it's essentially just the same as throwing on like a 60 dB you know, slope on Pro-Q or something like that. This mic is not quite like that. This mic has the ability to basically impart tone and saturation just by engaging those filters. So you're gonna see that once we actually play some examples here in a second, but just know that just because it says that there are two filters that you can use, those are not your basic 50 hertz, 80 hertz, high pass filters that you're probably used to. These things are incredible for adding saturation and adding tone and adding kind of a focus to where you want that element, whether it's a vocal or an acoustic guitar or an overhead to kind of sit in the actual capsule itself. The last thing that I wanna talk about is definitely I think what makes this mic the most unique and that is that it has three voicing options. So this mic has a gentle option, a neutral option and a forward option. It's just a little switch right here on the back that you can flip in real time. All of these options that I'm talking about are on the mic, they're not on the power supply and they are not DSP. These are things that are physically happening in the circuitry. These are things that Loughton specifically added. So. When you flip a switch, it is giving you a very, very physical effect. It's not just adding a DSP filter. It's not just adding DSP saturation. It is literally baked into the mic. So it's like you get a bunch of different microphones in one. If you're not a tube mic person, if you tend to go for FET, and this all sounds very intriguing, there is a similar mic by Lawton Audio called the Atlantis, which is basically this mic, but done in an FET style. If you haven't heard about it, there is a video, I believe by Devon Terrell of the channel Help Me Devon. He did a really, really cool breakdown of the Atlantis. So I'll try to link that below. Shout out to Help Me Devon. Go check them out if you haven't already. But if you are in the market for a tube mic, I'm telling you these three different modes they sound nothing alike. So you have the neutral setting, which is basically just what a tube mic should sound like. 
pretty thick kind of low mids, pretty, you know, forward mids, and a really nice smooth but still kind of bright top end. And then you have the gentle mode where it kind of rolls off some of that top. It kind of blooms some of that bottom. It's really nice for, you know, sharp female vocals. It's really, really nice for super bright acoustic guitars or overheads or if you wanted to use this on like a guitar amp at a really low volume. Something that's really bright and harsh, that gentle setting is going to handle it very, very well. But if you're like me and you have kind of a resonant voice and you're doing a lot of pop music and R&B and hip hop, the forward setting is probably going to be the one that you go for the most. That's what I basically leave mine on for myself. And that mode will kind of boost the top end, boost the air, kind of control some of those low mids a little bit more. And it adds a lot of punch and it adds a lot of sizzle. So you're starting to get more into like the 251, almost like the C800, kind of manly ref C that range once you have it in forward. When you have it in neutral, it's kind of similar to, you know, like an 87, 67. When you have it in gentle, it's kind of like a really old 47 or almost even like a ribbon mic. So we're going to play examples of all of those, but just know that the three voicing modes that it has are super, super unique. And so combining the voicings with something like the filtering, you basically get nine severely different tone options, which I think is a really, really, really cool idea. Uh, a couple other things about the mic before I show you examples. This does have an ultra large capsule. I believe it's 38 millimeters. So most mics are like 32, 33, maybe 35. This thing is huge. And what that does is that helps out with resonances in your voice and it helps out with sibilance. So this mic is super, super smooth. Um, one thing that I also want to mention is that it does come with the mic. It does come with the shock mount. It does come with the power supply and the five prong cable. And then it comes with a really, really nice carrying case. It's super sturdy, super hard shell. So it comes with all of the accessories that you would need to get this thing started. And, uh, I guess I should probably say, I probably should have mentioned this earlier, this video is not sponsored at all. I have, you know, worked with Lawton in the past. They've sent me stuff to try out. I've purchased stuff from them with my own money. I love that company. It is one of my favorite mic companies in the world, and they're such nice people. They make such incredible gear, and I think that they price their gear lower than they probably could. So even if this is out of your budget, go check out something like their 320 if you're looking for a budget-friendly tube mic. Go check out something like their 220 if you're looking for a really budget-friendly FET that one has a whole range of stuff and literally everything I've tried from them is insane, but I really want to focus on this. So I want to show you an example of me speaking into this mic and swapping through some of the different scenarios so you can really hear what it sounds like in real time. Let's check that out. Right now I am speaking into the Loughton Audio LT386 Eden. The settings that I am starting with are the neutral voicing mode with no filter and I have this set to a cardioid pattern. Now I've swapped the mic to the forward mode. I still have no filter on and I am still in a cardioid pattern, but this is what the Loughton Audio LT386 386 sounds like when you swap it into forward mode. And for the last example, I want you to hear this on gentle. This is the Loughton Audio LT386 on gentle mode with no filtering and a cardioid pattern. Now I'm speaking into the Loughton Audio LT386 Eden, and I have this set to the neutral mode once again, but this time I am using their soft filter. This is what it sounds like with the soft filter in a cardioid pattern still. I'm gonna swap it to forward right now. Now I am in forward mode. I still have that soft filter engaged. I am still in cardioid. This is what the Eden sounds like in forward with a soft filter and cardioid pattern. Now I'm in gentle mode. This is what the Loughton Audio LT386 Eden sounds like when you have it in gentle with the soft filter and cardioid pattern. I'm gonna swap this to the hard filter. Now I'm on the hard filter. I am still on the gentle setting and I have this set to the cardioid pattern. I'm still on the gentle setting and I have this set to the hard filter and cardioid. Let's go to neutral. Now I'm speaking into the Loughton Audio Eden on the hard filter set to neutral mode and I still have this in a cardioid pattern. So it's neutral mode, hard filter, cardioid. This is what it sounds like when you use the forward mode on the Loughton Audio Eden with that hard filter engaged still in a cardioid pattern. This is what it sounds like when you swap through filter modes and voicing modes and a spoken word example. Now that you've heard what it sounds like speaking into it, it's probably more important that you hear what it sounds like with some singing and with some guitar. So what I want to do is I want to show you some examples of all of the different modes with me singing into the mic. So I'm going to basically play a bar on loop. And then I'm going to go through a gentle with no filter, a neutral with no filter, a forward with no filter, gentle with soft, neutral with soft, forward with soft, and then the gentle with hard, neutral with hard, and forward with hard. So we're combining all of the voicings and filterings, but all of these examples were done in a cardioid pattern. So let me go ahead and just start a little loop point, and then we will get going. I'll try to have the names of whatever's being played, uh, so Miranda can add that in post for you so you can really make sure that you're listening to the right thing. This has... 
no other effects on it, no compression, no EQ, no DSing, and it did not go through a vocal chain. This went straight into my RME preamp. There's no HA81A, there's no 1176, no opto compressor, no nothing. This is completely raw mic into my interface. All right, here we go. Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I could ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? So you can tell in solo with no other effects that all of these different modes on this mic sound completely different in my opinion. Um, like I said, I think that you do truly get like nine different microphones in one just by swapping the filtering and just by swapping the mode. As you can tell, those filters are not just your standard kind of high pass filters that are cutting out 50 hertz or 80 hertz. These have totally different saturations in the mids and the low mids and the high mids, really depending on how you're driving that mic and what filter mode that you have engaged with whatever voicing mode you're using. So I wanna kind of show you what this sounds like inside of a mix. So I'm gonna pop on a little bit of clean compression. So I'm just gonna use Pro C right here and I'm just gonna leave this on this kind of control setting. It's just on classic. We can actually swap this to clean so there's no coloration. I'm just gonna add a little bit of DSing just because with compression, I like to DS just a hair. Then I'm gonna add one low cut filter right here at like 70 and I'm gonna add one kind of one dB dip right here at 550 just because that's where my voice builds up. And then I also have a reverb send, a delay send, and a small parallel widening send. Basically just a really, really easy kind of strip back run and gun version of a go-to vocal chain for me. So this is just EQ, compression, a little bit of DSing, reverb and delay, basically. Let me show you what it sounds like in the mix now. Why do you call just to tell me it's lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I could ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? Why do you call just to tell me you're lonely, thinking I can ease your mind? All right, so as you can tell, those all sound wildly different. It's a super wet vocal for this song. And again, there was really no special EQ or compression, just the most minimal chain I could think of. And for my voice, I have a lot of that low mid resonance that I think gets highlighted in the gentle and neutral modes. So unless I'm going to the top of my register, I stay in this forward for me. But typically when other people come, I'm swapping it to neutral or I'm swapping it to gentle. If they have a bigger voice, if they have a brighter voice, if they have uh, a little bit more kind of grit in their mid range, I'm gonna go for gentle or neutral. Where for me, I love the forward because it just cuts through a mix. Honestly, I could probably add one or two things to this last you know, forward with a hard filter and be completely good to go for a vocal mix inside of the actual song itself. So that is what it sounds like with all of my vocals. I wanna also show you what this sounds like with acoustic guitar. One thing that I will mention that's cool about this is that a lot of different microphones that I've used they definitely need some kind of like vocal chain. So they need like a really nice preamp. They need, you know, some outboard compression to really get that 3D kind of smooth sound that you're wanting in a vocal, where this just sounds pretty good off rip. There's really nothing else happening on this mic. So let's go ahead and let's just hear some acoustic guitar. So all of these are double tracked. And for this, I actually use the Omni setting, which I really love for acoustic. It kind of helps get rid of some of that low mid buildup that you're used to when you use an acoustic guitar. So we're gonna go through all of the same modes 
all the filters, all the different voicings, and you'll get to hear what that sounds like. So let's hear this. Now you can probably hear those all have a pretty different tone. And what's cool about this is that a lot of mics, if I want something to, you know, if I want an acoustic guitar to really shine bright through a pop mix, I'm going to have to use a more aggressive preamp, like an API. I'm going to have to crank the top end of that pre or that EQ. And I'll have to kind of get that more open sound like that. If I want something warmer, I'll go for like an old, you know, 1073 or an old like Chandler TG2. And I'll kind of roll off the top end. And you have to do all of those other decisions with outboard gear or plugins inside of your DAW. Where with something like the Eden, I can basically just choose immediately. Like if I'm doing a folk song, I'm probably going to go for this gentle with a soft filter right here. If I'm going for literally like a standard acoustic song, maybe I'm going for neutral soft filter. If I'm going for a really dense pop arrangement where I just need the transients of that guitar to really pop through, I'm probably going forward hard filter. <laughs> to me, I think that if you're going to spend almost $4,000 on a microphone, it is important that it's kind of a Swiss army knife. There are microphones that cost much more than this that only do one thing very well. And so when you're thinking about what kind of mic do I want in my studio? And you're limited on space, you're limited on funds, you have a ton of different kind of, you know, artist or vocalist or sources that you want to capture this on. Something like having filter options and like having voicing options is an insane thing to have at your disposal because rather than me always taking mics off of my stand and always putting new things up and always figuring out, you know, do I need a bright mic? Do I need a dull mic? Do I need a warm mic? Do I need a saturated mic? I can kind of control all of that right inside of this microphone with no DSP, no extra plugins, no extra outboard gear. So yeah, $4,000 is a lot of money to spend on a microphone. But if you think about getting eight mics, nine mics in one, it's really, really not a bad purchase at all. And again, if this is, you know, a little bit much for you and tube is not your thing, check out the Atlantis. It has all of the same features. I believe it's closer to like 1800 bucks because it's FET. And it's a little bit faster. It's a little bit brighter. It's a little bit more punchy where this mic is generally kind of slow. It's kind of, you know, squishy. It's kind of warm. It's kind of nice. It's perfect for vocals. It almost sounds like it has like built-in compression because the capsule is so big and because the tubes in it are so good that when you sing into it, it's almost giving you the effect of something like an LA two-way where it kind of has that slow compression. If I even zoom in on this acoustic guitar, you can see that there's not any crazy transients. If I go to these vocals, you can see that even the spikes that we have are pretty controlled and pretty big. Like I could easily clip gain this down right here where I sing loud and there's no other compression happening on this where if you use something like, um, like a smaller diaphragm mic or like a smaller capsule mic, you're going to get those transient peaks. You're going to get those transient responses, which maybe is what you want if you're doing something, you know, like a, like a really, really plucky acoustic guitar and you want that. This mic I think is perfect for vocals because you're not going to have all of those weird transient peaks that start to really you know act up when you do things like add your compression especially like a 76 so i don't know to me this mic is just by far the most versatile mic that you can get for the money and i think that not only is it versatile i think every setting on it actually sounds like a good version of a different mic so before i close i just want to remind people i know it sounds like i'm trying to shill out this mic i'm really not this was not sponsored they didn't ask me to make this video i've been using this for over a year now i just get so many questions on my vocal mic and on my vocal chain and i can't believe i've never done a full video actually showing you this so i wanted to break it down one last thing that i will mention is this mic is big it is heavy the build quality is like absolutely freaking ridiculous on this so if you are going to invest in this mic i also recommend in investing a really nice mic stand so i have like the ultimate support that's on like the big rolling bass you do not want this thing going on like an on stage 60 dollar mic stand you want this going on a big one that can take the weight it has some counterweight it can take you know all of the movement because this thing is an absolute unit and if this mic falls you're going to be extremely extremely sad so that was my last little caveat but that is my thoughts on the Loughton Audio Eden LT386. If you're looking for a tube mic for your studio and if you want to actually invest in something that 
can last you 20 years, has a bunch of different options, is made by a really, really cool company that is not just your traditional, you know, German mic company, US mic company. The, Lauten is crazy. I'm telling you, everything that they have is underpriced. So even if you can't grab this mic, go check out their full lineup. I've made videos about the 320. I've made videos about the 220. Go check them out. Not sponsored at all. I just love that company. And I think that they make the best value mics for all of you to check out. But other than that, that's going to do it for this video. I will see you guys soon with more content. Let us know what videos you want to see down in the comments below. And then other than that, if you enjoyed this video, please like it. And if you really, really enjoyed it, subscribe because we have more videos every single Friday. But I'll see you guys next time with much more content. And until then, much love. Peace.